Sure far away to tell I've been doing work. Pants? No hat. That means I'm into it. Moving inside the cab. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to tear this thing apart and start doing some finish welding and button it all up. And in order for me to do that, before this cab comes back off, there's one last thing I have to do. And that is get these pedals done. Yeah. And what I've decided to do. This is take two for you, Ben, when you're editing in case that first one didn't work because the battery died. You're probably not gonna see the whole process here. We're not gonna get through the bleeding process and making sure, showing you how they work and all that. We'll have to do an update video on that when the truck gets reassembled. Um, but what we are gonna do today is fabricate and install all my clutch and brake setup. What do I mean by that? I'm not using my stock stuff. I know a lot of people, when they do body drops, will modify the clutch, they'll do reverse spring clutches, They'll do smaller brake boosters and geo metro brakes and you'll cut your pedals and change the sizes to clear floors. Stock floor body job. None of that. But there is issues with the steering shaft, right? And that's why we did the steering first. And then we got the brake booster out of the way because we're not using that. What we are using is all this stuff from Speedway and Willwood. Starting with this guy right here that's going to go in the firewall and give us a secure, nice, place to mount our new pedals and our new master cylinders because this is what we're running one for the front one for the rear all your race car guys do this all your rock crawler guys do this everybody on planet earth who upgrades their brakes does stuff like this why don't mini truck guys do this I don't know. I don't know. We're gluttons for punishment with old remanufactured crap from countries that don't care about our safety and performance needs. For me, it doesn't make sense to spend all that cash on remanufactured parts and brake boosters and things that are just in the way and make your firewall ugly with all the kind of miles I put on my truck. I put almost 13,000 miles on the truck last year and I plan to put a lot more on it when it's back on the road. And I got my kids, my dogs, I want safety. And speaking of safety, it seems to be that a lot of people are hung up on the power brake option and the fact that I won't have a booster and I won't have power brakes. I'm not gonna get into a long rant about this. You do what works best for you. I'm gonna run this manual brake setup from Willwood. And when you tell me it's not as easy to find parts, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe it's not as easy to find parts in the middle of nowhere on the side of the road but it's 69 to $80 for a master cylinder that's brand new. I could always carry a spare one with me. It's two days out from Speedway. Actually, it's one day out from Amazon if you're a Prime member. That's right, you can get this stuff on Amazon and you can return it if it doesn't work out. They have lots of bore size options, lots of pedal options, lots of plates and parts to make installs somewhat easy if you're handy with the wrench and a grinder. And for me, I don't know the last time you've gone to O'Reilly's to get a stock master cylinder, but they're ordering it in too. So if it happens in the middle of nowhere, you're waiting on parts either way. Oh, and by the way, you're paying $160 for a brake booster that's been remanufactured. It's not even new. So there's no guarantee it'll work. Go watch the Nissan videos for that because I've already played that game. You ever buy parts that are supposed to be new and working condition from AutoZone or O'Reilly? or carparts.com or wherever. And then they're just like, yeah, that happens from time to time. Just bring it back and we'll give you another one. Yeah, I'm kind of done with that. Rant, my rant's over. I went too long already. Let's throw some parts in. So this is what we're starting with on the outside of the firewall. You can see now that our steering shaft is hooked up and works amazing, I'd like to point out. Getting rid of that rag joint was so smart. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, man, did I even record that? I don't know. I, I might have to do another one for you guys to show you how simple that was. But we have all this available space where that plate's going to go now to mount our master cylinders, clutch, front master cylinder and rear master cylinder. So I'm excited. Let's get to cutting. Trying to get you guys a little bit of the action in here. 
That's it. That's your factory brake and clutch setup if you've never done one, right? So uh, that's for your brake light switch. This is your clutch switch, right? This is your, uh, what the hell they call this? Neutral safety switch, right? So your truck doesn't start when it's in gear. So in the past, what a lot of guys will do is take this bracket and modify it to do a reverse swing over here and put the master cylinder here. They'll take this guy, they'll cut it, they'll move this up higher on the firewall and redrill your holes for your master on the outside. And those are all things you can definitely do if you want to use this factory pedal and setup and everything. There's no reason, like guys have been doing mini trucks and body drops for years like that by doing reverse swings, counter lever setups, like I said, just simply cutting this and apart, you'll, you'll cut the clutch section apart from the brake section and just move the whole unit up and redrill your mounting holes and redrill your master cylinder hole into the firewall and you would just move your firewall or your master cylinder higher on the firewall. And you could certainly do that and get your truck right back on the road. Because as we all know, when you body drop your truck, your clutch master right here has no room to exist where it once did. You just, you can't drive and steer a truck like that. This thing's like 30 bucks. Some guys will take the gen before, you know, like, cause this is a 93. So they'll take the 88s or whatever the 80, you know, the 85, the 88s, 87, 80, I don't know. They'll take the gen before they take a smaller one. It's, it's like a little shorter and they'll move this guy. Some guys will box this in and lose your wipers and move it up in here. There's a lot of things you could do. For me, I just think the smarter answer, oh, hi, baby girl. Okay, I'm coming, baby. She needs mouthwash. I think the smarter answer is just put new parts. Sometimes it's good to spend a little bit of money and get some new parts. You do you, I'm gonna do me. I wanted to take a second and go over this stuff that I'm using and uh, just show you kind of the difference on why I made this decision or how I came to this conclusion. So this is the old guy we just took out, right? And uh, you can see, man, like, like I said, you can easily modify this stuff to make it work. It's worked for 30 years. It's made by Toyota. It's going to keep working, right? There's not an issue with it. You got your brakes, you got your clutch. And then you get over here, it's your firewall plate. And this is the new stuff. This is the Willwood stuff. This is going to help you locate and mount everything, right? This is going to be your new brake pedal. It's going to, it's going to go on this guy, right? You can see it passes right through that plate and then it bolts right directly into your new master cylinder. Now this is a single master cylinder. So you're gonna have one for the front, run for the rear. That isolates your braking stuff. It's very common in racing situations. You've got a balance bar so you can adjust bias. Uh, that's a whole conversation. You guys can go read up on balance bars and pedal setups and how to set this up. And Willwood has really good tech stuff. There's tons of YouTube videos on that on how to set your balance bar up and what the difference is between brake ballast, balance bars, proportioning valves, front and rear. That's that's a whole, educate yourself on this stuff. I'm telling you. And then we'll have a clutch pedal. Obviously these will be reversed. You'll have your, now obviously these will be reversed, right? So in this configuration, you'll have your clutch on this side, your brake on this side, and then your gas pedal will be over here, which, you know, I'm just gonna use the stock gas pedal that's in the truck for now. That may change at a later date anyways. But as you can see, all this just locates in this piece here. These guys thread right into the back of your pedal. They bolt right onto that stuff. You've got a good looking brake pad here. It's gonna go down there, right? Get that racy kind of cool feel and uh, step into some better, newer parts. That's why I decided to do it. In the end, this route or this route, no difference. It's the same thing. Now to be crystal clear, Willwood makes so many options, it almost makes it overwhelming. So if you need help with any of this stuff, start on their website, reach out to me. I'll help where I can or point you in the right direction of stuff I learned and uh, go for it, man. What do you got to lose? I'm not sponsored by Willwood. They didn't send me this stuff. I saved my nickels. I bought all this stuff. 
This is the, some stuff I might mess around with, some clutch stuff, move my reservoir. I might just go straight on the firewall since this plate makes it easy. Um, I'm excited. We're going to get into this right now. This is how I'm going to solve my brake light situation. It's just a pressure switch. And all you do with this is tee it into your line, right? With this little T right here. And this is all available through Speedway. You just get this, this goes in here. You give one side power, the other one goes to your brake light. You apply pedal pressure, just like the factory and uh, that's it. Brake lights hopefully light up. We're gonna see how this all works. I've never done this on a 93 body drop Toyota pickup before, so we get to learn together. A lot of talk in today's video, I know, but I wanna make sure I take my time and go through this because I don't know anybody that's really done what I'm about to do before. I haven't found it on YouTube if so. So I wanna make sure that I answer all your guys' questions. Of course, if there's something you don't see in this video, comment below and I'll get to it. DM me directly, however you wanna do it. Instagram's the same name. We're gonna start by trimming this line out first so we can get our plate up against here, trace where it needs to be, and then probably have to come in here and cut this hump out and that. I'm gonna try and stay above this line and that's gonna mimic the proper amount of pedal placement. And what I mean by that is, before you took all that out, right? Before you took this out, right? Before you took all that out, you got yourself a little cheat sheet, right? And what I mean by that is, you know exactly how far off the floor your pedal sat originally. You know how close the spacing is between the pedals, gas, brake, clutch. You know how far they are from some reference points in the dash. In this case, my fuse box is not moving. So I measured to the center of each pedal from something that's not changing. My firewall has been cut out. I didn't want to use that in case it changes. That fuse is not moving. This floor is not moving. So I know that the center of this clutch pedal factory was seven inches off the floor and nine and a half inches from my fuse panel. So I'm trying to replicate this setup using the firewall plate that I bought from Speedway Motors. So if everything works out, we'll get that pinch molding cut and we'll put the plate up there. We'll trace it and cut out what we need to do and weld her in. And, and we'll do that in an orientation that the pedals somewhat remain close to factory settings. Now, if you need more leg room, if you want them a little higher, if you want them a little lower, this is the chance to do it because, well, it's up to you. You're the builder. Okay, my pedal pads aren't installed yet, but, right? My pedal pads aren't installed yet, but basically you can see old, new, same difference, right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, take this whole unit, get up under the dash, put my pedal pads on and uh, measure where the old stuff was, make some marks and get to cutting and drilling. Let's get these pedals in. <laughs> Moving blankets, they like to catch on fire. Uh, I am kind of a cut it first, measure it five times later guy. I'm just kidding. Do a bunch of looking at it for like three days. That's the only reason I'm able to attack things. I've thought about this thing for a week now. Pretty sure I got the plan figured out. Worst case, just weld it back in, it's only metal. Okay, I can't stress this enough. You still have stuff on the back side of that firewall. This is a good time to go in there and move it. All your wiring, all your uh, insulation, anything that's gonna catch fire or, uh, you know, is required to make your truck run again. It's a good time to go get it out the way. Quadruple check that there's nothing on the back side of that firewall before you start cutting. I don't know how this view is gonna look. But, uh, you can see, like, hopefully I can adjust this view. 
fucking post. That fire wall is bare. You got tons of real estate to get in there and get everything out of the way and get your pedals just where you want them. I've even got my gas pedal left in place. I'm gonna double check my steering wheel. So I got my steering shaft just hanging out there. It's not hurting nothing. Get that bracket, trace it, hang pedals, do what you gotta do. Make sure you got these things where you like them. I left you on the big tripod. I left you on the big tripod, so what? I realize this may be the part that scares a lot of you, right? Like the part of no return. And I'll be honest, it scares me too. My truck was working fine. These clutch worked fine. The brakes worked fine. And when I say fine, I mean they worked good for 30 year old brakes. So you gotta overcome that fear factor with the excitement factor. We're almost there. Got a little bit hanging on there. There we go. Hope we caught that on film. Remember to press play. Hey, look, you can always weld it back in. Probably didn't even need to cut this pinch, to be honest. We probably could have tucked it right up under there. So if anybody is doing this at home, don't cut this pinch. You could probably leave it and tuck this plate right up under there. We'll see. We'll see. Doesn't look like I nicked any lines or any wires. Success. Well, I learned a lot. I learned that no matter how many times you measure, measure three more times. That's my rule. Go three more from now on. Um, I don't know that it would have mattered much. Sometimes it's just a matter of you put it in and then you realize something else and you put it in. Let me give you my tip. Here's my tip. If you're gonna hang these badass pedals in your car, have a friend. Have a friend help you. Because the reason I had to take mine off and move it was to um, get it situated perfectly in the steering I had to get it situated perfect in the steering so it doesn't contact the shaft underneath the car. Crazy thing enough is, let me grab a tape measure here. They're not adjusted. This is just the first time. You guys are seeing it the first time I am. They're just in here. This is not final mock-up. They're not screwed in where they need to be. Any of that stuff. They are in the home they're gonna live in. Now we still have to come in here, way up top. There's provisions on the top of these brackets or on the top of these pedals to um, you have to make a bracket to support them. So what I'll probably do is get some flat stock and some square tubing and get up here. When I take these pedals back out, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me come this way, you can see. See those mounting holes right there? We're gonna take some flat steel and some square tubing and we're gonna make it connect and bolt into our dash brace. This all bolts into the truck. It's safety, it's strong. Your steering column bolts to that, of course. So we'll make the brake pedal tie into this guy as well. That way it's gonna have the firewall for strength as well as some bracing attached to your dashboard. It's gonna be super strong. So when you're doing those stops and traffic or taking it out for track days or, you know, that fun stuff, you don't put your foot through the floor. Seven inches was our factory pedals. And you can see by the time we get these things adjusted, they're gonna be close to where we started. Now, don't forget, we've got Raptor liner, probably some sound deadening or some heat stuff back on the firewall. And we've also got carpet going back in. So I think this will work. I think we're definitely, I mean, there's my gas pedal in stock location. So if the gas pedal's there, they haven't changed much other than just needing adjusted. Boy, we let that undercoating, that rubber on fire. That stuff's nasty. So, wanna go outside? Let's go outside and take a look. So originally, I was just gonna do the clutch on this truck, and I ordered this guy, which sets you up for a remote reservoir that you can mount anywhere you want. And I figured that'd be kinda, kinda, kinda handy, because I wouldn't have a container here, I could put it over here or wherever I want. But then when I decided I was gonna do these twins, I ordered a third one to match. No, 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 I'm not rolling in dough from all those uh, cool memberships you guys have bought. Wait, none of you guys have bought memberships yet? Go buy memberships. It gives you exclusive stuff to like 
birthday wishes, behind the scenes videos, see the videos first before anybody else, all kinds of perks. I think there's like three tiers, so I don't know, I'm just doing what YouTube tells me. But what I am gonna do is go ahead and get a third one. I ordered a third one with all that baller money I'm talking about. That way it just matches, looks cool. I mean, this, this, this would work, but I mean, we've gotten this far with the steering and the master cylinders. And why not make it all look match and look good when you pop that hood to flex this fancy motor, right? Um, yeah, so there's some patching to do, which cap's gotta come back off anyways. I use this pinch to actually line up where she needs to go. So we'll get this all welded up and seam sealed back in. We'll need to trim the factory panel and put it back on. That'll close up our steering because you can see how much our steering shaft, how the height has changed on this now. But that 100% bolts into the column. The column is hooked up now. All the keys are in, all the bolts are in. Everything's in for this. Everything clears, everything's good. There's no binding, no issues, no nothing. So we'll just notch our panel and seal that back up so we don't get any fumes in here and get this all sealed up. This is a big step and I'm glad to share this with you because this is the last part of the fabrication that has to happen before we take this whole truck apart, finish weld it, grind it, paint it, get it back on the road. And well, mini Nats was the goal. So we're gonna see if we make it because that was the last thing to figure out. Now, obviously the brakes still need plumbed. The clutch still needs plumbed. I need to get a new slave cylinder hooked up to that thing. We need to get everything bled out, tested, and make sure we've got some good stops. I'm just guessing when it comes to what I'm doing. I, I did all the calculators that are available to you, all the resources that Willwood has on the Willwood website to figure out bore size, pedal size, and everything with caliper size, especially since we're switching to disc brakes in the rear. But that's something that can happen when the axle's off. I'll get these shafts out and put new bearings back there and new seals and new disc brakes and Heck, I could probably even do that today. Let's see. But for now, all right. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I don't know. I don't know how any of this YouTube stuff works. It's just the stuff they recommend and make you send up for. And we're probably going to be working jobs till the day we die so we can keep building this mini truck stuff. But I'm happy to share it with you guys. So thank you so much.